Hey guys! <laughs> hey guys, it's Donnie Tom Logan back with another video for you. And today, slamming my little thing down and twisting the camera thing around so I can see it. Wibbly, wibbly, wobbly. We're going to take a look at the uh, latest board to come from the uh, Gigabyte stables, and that's the G1 Sniper. And many of you will be thinking, hey, hey, yeah, X, hold up a minute, it's Z87. Well, that would be Intel. This, my peoples, is AMD. And it's a little bit of, um, this one's got me kind of like, I'm not going to say tingling, but it, it does make me question, not necessarily why, but it's a, yeah, let's just, we're going to flip it around anyway. So, there's a lot of stuff on the back. Um, but essentially, what this is, is an FM2 socket motherboard. Uh, that's part of the AM, uh, part of the Gigabyte gaming range. Obviously, the black and green, the Sniper branding is their, their, their gaming avenue stuff. But this is for the FM2 stuff. But where it's A88X, it's actually an FM2 Plus socket. But the CPUs are interchangeable. So you can use either an FM2 CPU on here, or you can use one of the, the FM2 Pluses when they do get released. I don't know whether we're going to get them at the end of this year or the beginning of next. Nothing's kind of confirmed yet but the boards are starting to filter through. Uh, now, why this is a kind of, uh, you know, kind of a confusing thing is I really thought that the FM2 uh, boards and CPUs were all about budget. So to have a, a, C, a board like this with loads of features packed on it, it's obviously gonna cost a few quid more. Than we, now, we've done uh, a, an MATX FM2 board in the past, which won our um, Value for Money Award. It was just a blue PCB, you know, it, it, it worked, it, you know, it wasn't about being all flashy and stuff, and that was 56 quid. Now, this is going to come in around the 80 to 85 pound mark. Um, so, 30 pound more, but, you know, what do you get for your extra 30 quid? So, out the way, drop the box, ding! You never even saw me put it in there, did you? There's the look at the board itself. Now, what I am going to say is I need to move that box out of the way so you can't see a shadow. Is, uh, you know, what do you get for your extra 30 quid? Now, you can obviously see that it's an ATX board, but actually, it's not full-size ATX because if we have a look up here, you can see we've got screw hole, screw hole, and there's not another screw hole. Now, the other screw would be just on the end here. So, essentially, what this means is it's, it's slightly narrower uh, than a normal ATX board. And I'm just trying to find something to show you. I had wandered off to find you a board, uh, but it's probably easier if I just explain. Right, up in this corner, if we were going to have another, if we had a normal ATX uh, motherboard here, the, the screw, the mount would be just about here and the board would be a little bit longer. If we have a look down here, it, it, it appears like it should be in line, but when you have a look at your cases, there are several of these uh, screw points depending on um, you know where you end up putting your the, the actual motherboard mounts. Now, if it was a normal ATX, this wouldn't be this far in. It would actually be just out here, same down here. So the board is ever so slightly narrower than a normal ATX. Now that is not a you know something to mark it down for. It's just something that I wanted to bring up. Um, it's just this screw may throw people and just think they've just missed it on the outsides, but they haven't. Now. So FM2, now we've got, there are a, a selection of uh, CPUs that can go in there and you can get uh, overclocking ones, they do do the K series, there's the 5600K and the 5800K, that's of the, the current generation. We obviously don't know what's going to be coming in the not too distant future. Uh, but they have got onboard GPUs, uh, which is why we've got around the back the HDMI, VGA and then We've obviously got HDMI down here. There's no display port there, but while we are around the back, just to have a look, PS2 port up here. This is great. Um, uh, a lot of uh, gamers still actually use these, but anyway, two USB 2s, two USB 3s, two USB 2s here, gigabit internet, uh, internet, <laughs> ethernet, gold-plated audio connections here, and actually this USB here is gold-plated as well. Uh, we will talk about the audio for this gold in uh, in a little bit more detail, but you can see that we've got a a sound like a board separate around here, like we have on the M5 and the big sniper as well. Um, and in fact, while we've got it up, that's the OAMP there. You can 
change those little chips depending on the audio settings that you want to have. Uh, there's some dip switches here which they say are gain switches uh, but I've looked in the manual and it doesn't really give me much uh, information um, to talk about it. Now the gold capacitors next door to the uh, cover um, they're Nikon high-end audio capacitors and I'm crackling all over the place but that's these so they're um, Nikon high-end audio capacitors We've said about the um, uh, custom gold-plated shield, which is that amp-up thing that you can see there glistening in the light. And we've also said about the dip switches and the O-amp. So I've covered everything there, but round the back of the board, round here, on the other boards, it lights up and I can see some SMDs, surface mount diodes, they're like LEDs, but really tiny ones. So this will all light up when it turns on, which will give it a nice kind of green glow as we're used to with the the um the other boards uh so other things to um talk about is it has got dual bios as we can see here so you'll be able to switch between the two uh it's saying that it's got eight uh sata three ports we've got six here and then two at the side um so just to show you there's six vertical ones look here but there are two horizontal one so if you did want to keep your cables tidy you could have like an SSD and a storage drive here and it wouldn't matter um, it'll only you know start to get messy when you start to use those uh, there's no onboard like power switch or reset switch or you know kind of overclocking kind of stuff or anything like that there is a front panel USB just over here um, and pretty much the other stuff that there are saying about the only thing that I did need to point out which I didn't before was the uh, this um, gold plated USB is what they're calling a DAC up a digital audio converter I think that's cool so it's obviously something that you can connect the board to now I'll keep moving it we have got an 8 pin uh, CPU power at the top there's a CPU fan header there then we've got SysFan 1 there and SysFan 2 there SysFan 3 is on this side and I'm just looking to see if we've got a system fan anywhere down near the bottom but we haven't so putting the board back down again and getting it central uh, the one thing that I've been avoiding talking about is the two green PCI Express slots now the, uh, the, this one is wired electrically as 16 times they are PCI Express 3 uh, this one is wired as 8 times now it only supports Crossfire, there's no mention of SLI anywhere on the box, anywhere on the board or anything to the point where normally when we have multiple graphics cards look, it'll say AMD Crossfire and you'll have SLI underneath, well there's none of talk of it anywhere. Um, now obviously it's, a, it's good to give you an option of having it there but if you've bought an, you know, this in the first place, I can't see many of you ending up wanting to go Crossfire maybe further down the line because if you were to buy your CPU and a cheap graphics card and then in you know like six months time or whatever you've got a bit of extra money and you think to yourself now do I want a bigger graphics card a bigger single one or should I just spend a little bit of money and get another one you know that's all well and good you can do but one of the things uh, with these uh, APUs is for the price they're actually really really good at gaming if you turn the resolution down so you're not necessarily running it at 1920 by 1080 you might be running it at say 1650 by uh, what was it 1680 by 1050 or whatever it was you know basically going down from a 24 inch wide screen to maybe 22 or even 19 kind of res um, and I mean the, the old school kind of native 19 inch res which was what 1440 by 900 or whatever it was if you turn those the resolution down or you turn the uh, the detail settings down from kind of like very high down to medium or something keep the anti-aliasing off they can be really really strong performers and that's just with that onboard graphics now the reason why I'm saying this is we have looked at it and it for some of the lower end games like uh, COD and SimCity uh, and uh, even Tomb Raider we've played just with that onboard GPU and they are really really strong and at that, that price point they make a lot of sense um, the, the, the bit that I find slightly more confusing is if you were going to start thinking about adding a graphics card in if you're going to think about adding a graphics card in I really wouldn't be fussed about you know spending a lot of money on an overclocking APU or anything like that I would just get an APU that works 
graphics and then run it with your graphics. Um, because obviously the more that you spend on the APU, the, the better the graphics that's going to be in it and you're not really going to be utilising it. So if you are looking at this board, one of the things I would say is base your APU choice or your FM2 choice on a, you know, a relatively cheap one. Don't you know, get the most bargain you know, bucket one. Um, but these really come into their own, like I said, they, they make a lot of sense then. So if you go for a slightly cheaper one, uh, then spend more money on your graphics. Uh, people are going to be instantly worrying about bottlenecks and stuff like that. But to be fair, peeps, the people that can afford uh, or want to spend this money on a board aren't going to be looking to buy a 7970 or a you know 6990 or whatever. 7990 you know Aries 2 whatever you want to call it so it's the, the, the if you if you're looking at this as an option and looking at an APU as an option and you want a graphics card like I said don't go for like the 5600k or the 5800k or whatever unless you you know you know you're just going to be wanting to overclock the CPU for fun because if it's for gaming then your GPU is going to be the most important purchase so I'm just trying to steer the way that you uh, budget your money and where parts go to now, when we look at it, like I said, we had an old, uh, with the blue MATX board uh, that we did previous, that was 56 quid. This is going to be about 85 quid. I would personally say um, that for probably the aesthetics alone, I would probably be willing to pay that extra 30 quid. But then again, I'm, you know, uh, I'm not, you know, having to, you know, scrimp and save and budget and, uh, you know, paper round or get money off my parents or worrying about what the wife's going to say, kind of hiding money away from the wife type of thing. So the type of things to think about is A, yes, you've got your aesthetics. B, you have got upgrade options in the future. C, you're going to get some really good audio from this as well with uh, audio options going on in the not too distant future as well. So you could base it on getting yourself a CPU and getting yourself the motherboard uh, and then you could say to yourself, right, next month or the month after I'm going to get my GPU and then you might think to yourself right now because I've got this uh, this amp up I might get some better headphones so you've got that sorted then you might be thinking to yourself well I might want another GPU and you could plan uh, an upgrade path for yourself over the next few months with this board um, so maybe spending that extra 30 quid in the in the in the beginning could end up saving you money you know in the long term um, and to be fair, if you, you know, if you are thinking about this, you're obviously also going to be thinking to yourself, well, I want it to look nice. So I've got a side panel window in my case as well. So there's lots of little things to talk about. And I would probably go as far as to say this is probably one of the best looking uh, FM2 boards that I've, uh, I've seen. Because all the other ones, like I said, have been kind of real budget, limp wristed. Uh, the type of motherboards that you want to put in your case without a window on it and close it and forget about it. This is going to give you something to want to show off. This is the, you know, an FM2 board that you could be building on a budget and you're still going to want to, you know, have a window in there to be able to show your mates what you've done with it. Um, so choose your, uh, your parts wisely to go with it. Just remember, little TTL tip, because it's got green on it doesn't mean that you want to flood your case with green fans or green lights. Uh, if you want to highlight these green parts, my advice to you would be to have a fixed green parts in your case like maybe green cables um, or you know maybe green on the graphics card or whatever if you're going to put any lights in the case I would say use uh, white ones because the white ones will then um, bring out the accents of the green on your board if you put green lights in there it kind of bleaches all the colors all kind of into one and it, it, the, the green then doesn't stand out as much Trust me, been there, done that. Green lights and a green on the board doesn't work. Smash some white in there, and it really brings those white, the, the you know the little colours out. Look at Orca. If you turn, look at the lights in there. The uh, the red bits on the board stand out a lot more than if I'd filled that case full of red and everything would have kind of gone pink and horrible, and it just wouldn't have worked. So that would be the, some TTL advice there for you. But I'm going to look forward to uh, this being tested. It's probably not going to be done by me on the channel. It's going to go off to one of the other reviewers, but it will be live on the main OC3D website in the not too distant future. Uh, you've hardly seen me face today. I mean, do you know what I mean? Maybe you like not having to see me. I've had a bit of haircut. Oh, you can see me grey. Anyway, this is Tiny Tom Logan with another video for you. Out.